G'day, guys. We just get it crunk up on that fun, up on up in this dancery. We got y'all open, now you're floating, so you got to dance for me. Don't be no hateration, holleration in this dancery. Let's get it percolating, fogging, waiting, so just dance for me. Whoa. G'day, guys. My name's Lockie Paul, and this is the Gold Ute from TikTok. Behind me here, uh, this is my other car. It's called Big Bad Baz. I named it Barry when I bought it because it just was old and looked like a Barry. And um, you now it's a bit bigger and badder, so it's Big Bad Baz. If you're watching this, more than likely, you've probably clicked a link somewhere and it's brought you here and you're now watching my video. And I'd just like to say thanks for even going that far and giving me a bit of a chance to see what I'm gonna ramble on about. What you are watching right now is actually the first video that I've ever posted ever on YouTube. Uh, well, I've actually posted some other videos, but not with me in it with a little microphone. The purpose of today's video, I'm gonna be taking you on a little bit of a journey of how the gold ute from TikTok evolved. Back five years ago, this ute here was a 2012 Workmate. It was painted white and it was sitting on a Toyota yard in somewhere in Melbourne. Um, and I went and bought it for $35,000 and I brought it back to this shed. I parked it right here on this bit of concrete here and I absolutely pulled it apart and made it look like this. The first job I done was I pulled the tray off. I didn't actually build a new tray for it. I cut the tray up and I modified it to make it look better. And it did look good from a distance. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't the best tray, you know. I rushed it, I'd done it in about three days. I actually pulled it off on like a Friday and I had it back on the ute painted like the next Wednesday or whatever. It was a rush job. So moving on from the tray, I then went and bought some secondhand bar work off Facebook. I painted it, color coded it white and I put that on there. That was only a few weeks after I bought it. I put a three inch side pipe exhaust on so I could hear the thong slap. <laughs> Built some custom, ooh, I built some <laughs> There's a bull bar there. I built some custom subwoofer boxes and I started wheeling it. I was heading up to the Pyrenees. Um, a little bit of Mount Coal, I drove it through the snow. I, started, I was loving it. When I actually bought this ute, I had plans of putting coil springs in the rear. I was following Matty Flexi at the time. He had coils in his one. Uh, a couple of other guys had 80 series coils and I was like, look, that looks affordable to me. I can buy the ute, do the conversion, have the coils, and then I have solid axles, V8, whatever. I thought it was good at the time. Anyway, so I got the ute, put a tray on it, put a bull bar on it, and then I went and bought an 80 series chassis cut diff and everything, and I just chopped the whole chassis apart and started a coil conversion. For the coil conversion, I actually paid $350 delivered. I got it brought home on a truck for free, and I pulled it over to here onto the hoist and pulled it all apart. At this time, so we're going through all this stuff is when I started my Instagram page. And I actually started it because I wanted to share a lot of the photos and stuff. I just wanted a place to share and show, you know, all the locals around here what I could do in the hope that someone might say, oh, can you build me a tray? And I'd do it for a cashy or whatever. It's like my portfolio for my work. And I thought I'd share the stuff that I do to my ute along the way for others to see it. So then I went and built another tray because the other one was a bit rough, so I made my own exhaust. It's actually still on there. It's the one thing I haven't changed only because I haven't had time and no one looks at it because it's under the car. I put lockers in it, um, I put air compressor on it, I started wheeling it. Ended up buying this 40 series Land Cruiser from a local farmer. It was stored in a shed, it was running driving. The boys actually gave it a send off. Live and marry. What are you reckon, Diesel? Oh, the old FJ. And they drove around in it and drank some beers before I went and picked it up. And yeah, brought it home back to the shed on the trailer and drove it over the shed, backed it on the hoist and pulled the whole thing apart and it hasn't run since. <laughs> Now, this is the part where it all started to go down here. I was participating in a bit of sand driving. No sway bars and imitation bead locks and a homemade 80 series core conversion. Being a bit silly on the sand and my back left wheel popped off the bead and over we went. I had two mates in the ute with me. Um, we were three up and had a bench seat at the time. We beached the thing on its lid. 
things were a little bit complicated for me. It had been engineered at the time, but the engineering hadn't been processed. I'd never got the paperwork, hadn't paid the build, didn't have the mod plates, so it's not engineered basically. So I didn't have any engineering. I was running 35s, a homemade coil conversion and whatever else. What I decided to do was take matters into my own hands and fix it myself. And that is when I decided to paint it gold. Basically done a heap of mods to it, painted it gold, put all these accessories, clear views to whatever, you name it, I put it on there. And then I had to put all the rest of the car back together, all the dash, all the little things that I'd pulled apart. I had this every, whole thing apart. I painted the chassis, rebuilt the whole thing from ground up and made it better. I jumped in it and I drove to Cape York for the first drive. All packed up, ready to roll. Got two fridges on there, swag, Weber, beers. That's about all I need, really. See, I jumped in the thing and I took off and I went on an adventure. I had made a few mates over the time of sort of being an influenza on Instagram, whatever, and that's when I first met Matty, Corbo, and Zane, and also there was Hugo that was with us as well. So, yeah, just having a bit of a look here. I went to Cape York, we done the tally track. Sandy! There's another track there, you cross the Pasco River. So we done that, we went to Chili Beach. got our picture at the sign, I had my Zinger box with me, so that's actually where the Zinger thing started from. I was sharing all my Zinger boxes along that whole Cape York trip. We ran into Fendog. Fendog was doing a, a walk from tip to tip, so the tip of Tasmania to, well we started at the Cape I think, and he was walking from Cape to Tasmania. Yeah, 5,000 clicks it should be before I'm done. Um, doing about 35 kilometres a day, and I'm doing it hard and I'm doing it tough, and I'm doing it without any support, because there's a lot of people out there with mental health issues they don't have the support. The journey I want to fucking take and the message I want to spread is that all you got to do is reach out for help and ask and the help will be there. Then I went to Maddie's. Um, I actually stayed at Maddie's for a couple of months. Went to Brisbane. I went and seen Bush Wraps. They wrapped the bonnet professionally for me. I'd done a bit of a video with them. It's on YouTube somewhere. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, after that, I went and done a rig rundown with Sam Isles. I actually really enjoyed that. Shout out to Sam for that video. Then basically, I was stuck in Queensland, so all the borders were closed because of COVID. So I had to drive around New South Wales, and the only way to do that was to go down the Birdsville track. Then I was talking to Bailey Winnan, Maverick Campers at the time. He wanted to lend me a camper trailer to test out behind my ute to see if we can handle being pulled behind this thing. Matty Flexi at the time, he was actually building a toy hauler and he said, well, you know, if you're towing a trailer down there and I'm building a trailer and we'll be driving past the Simpson Desert. So that's what we done. We went and we done the Simpson Desert, just me and Matty. There was no one in the Simpson Desert at the time. It was very quiet because of COVID, I think. Everyone was kind of scared at the time. We were going through there because we had to get home. We got in there and we were going crazy. <laughs>
Then we got bogged. We got very badly bogged. Then we got unbogged and then we got bogged again. And then we just kept getting bogged until we nearly made it to the other side of the lake. And then we got bogged. Straight into it. Just gonna try and rinse it out with a bit of water. See if it comes good, otherwise we've got spare brushes and stuff here. Thinking low third, maybe. Maybe grab fourth. Hopefully move backwards. Oh, let's try and do it. There for like eight hours we had to unhook the trailer. I got myself out, I winched Maddie and his trailer out, then we skull dragged my trailer out and we bent the jockey wheel and we had a hard time even just getting it back onto the tow ball of the ute. It's moving. Slide this cross to get the jockey wheel over so it's shorter so we can lift it up. So on this episode's kitchen segment, we'll be making salami and leg ham sandwiches. With fresh bread and gherkins. <laughs> Bogged in the middle of the desert. Seems to be moving. How long have we drove for now? About 15 minutes? Yeah, 15 minutes from when we made it. And we're at another salt lake. Oh, and I've shit a uni. Back uni. I done a uni in my rear tail shaft. All the rollers fell out of it, but it was still connected. So I was like, well, who cares? Like, just keep driving. Went for a few hours. Probably went for the rest of that afternoon. It was also 40 degrees. There was flies everywhere. Here we come to a dune that was a little bit bigger and I had to send it up it. Of course, bang, out goes the tail shaft into the ground. That was it, I was buggered. Basically what we done, we unhooked the camper trailer, we took a bit of a video, done a bit of a review on it. It's gonna be the moment of truth how well these seals have actually worked. Then we're gonna lift the first part up. Give it a one. Let's see. Oh, well, it's looking good so far. That'll do there. You can obviously see how clean that is in there. The only mud that's in there is what's just come off the roof. Hey, watch this from the front. <laughs> we just need to grab the remains of my stuff out of here, just in a pillow and sleeping bag. I don't have a bed now, so I'm just gonna sleep on the tray in my sleeping bag and that's it, so. Um, and we said, look, you know what? This is gonna have to be an insurance job or something, because we're not like, we didn't have a sat phone, we didn't have anything, and we were in the desert with only a certain amount of food and water and stuff. So at this point, it was starting to get dark. It was late in the night. We'd been bogged all day in the Salt Lake. We were buggered, it had been 40 degrees. We'd been sweating, drinking bottles of water. We didn't actually have a lot of water left. And we said, okay, let's just drive through the night, try and make some progress. We need to get out of here. Things are gonna be bad if we, you know, muck around. We don't have enough food and water to be taking our time. Let's just keep going.
about two hours down the track, Maddie's fan sees the bearing, breaks off and goes through his radiator. Calls up on the UHF and he's like, Pauly, this isn't good. There's killing everywhere. Um, my fan's broken off. Like, I'm like, Gained a, a fan belt and that's my fan. That's his uh, fan. That noise you can hear the water running is out of the hole in the radiator. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we had a big think about it, and what we done was I unbolted Maddie's tail shaft out of his ute, put it into my ute. Matt's lift pump to drain his tanks, fill these jerrys. Zero camping gear. Full tank of fuel, we've raided all the fuel out of that. We've raided the tail shaft out of Matty's. We've filled up the jerry cans. We've got no camping gear, just some basic clothes. All recovery gear. All the recovery gear, all the spare parts, all the tools, and all the food and water that we had. We've got about a thousand Ks to do. We've got a thousand Ks to do to Alice Springs. So we're just taking in turns or whatever. We'll get there. We took all the camping gear out of my ute. Matty had a passenger with him at the time, so we pulled the center console out of it. We stacked up recovery gear so we could put three people in there because it had bucket seats then, it didn't have a bench seat. The three of us jumped in the ute and we headed off to Alice Springs to get a radiator. Now this is all in one stint. So we got bogged in the lake, we dumped the camper trailer, we broke the shaft, we drove all through the night into the next day and then we ended up at Mount Dare and we went to bed. <laughs> my ute tore all the bushes in my rear five link. Then it tore all the threads out of my rear panard. So we had my diff ratchet strapped to the chassis for the last probably 50 k's into Alice Springs. Oh yeah, beautiful. Ready, push. Yep, it's in. There is no thread at all left there. Go wobble it. Why do we even bother putting that And tied a ratchet strap from the diff to the chassis to try and keep it pulling that way. Then we rounded up a heap of parts, fixed my ute, got the parts from Maddie's ute. We're just in Bunnings. Jiggle hose, some extension for it. Shopping for desert recovery gear. 166. 15 bucks. We got a 44 gallon drum, we put it on the back of my ute and we filled it up with diesel. Oh yeah, just filling up the ute. What a mission. We had all the spare parts, we loaded up the ute and we drove all the way back into the desert. That's what they mean when South Australia shut the borders. <laughs> how many hours drive till your ute? Oh, ten. Another 10 hours, and how many have we done since me out there? Uh, about, four. about four, and it was about five from Alice Springs. It's still on the windscreen, broke down. Seen there's been one car drive past since we left. Fixed Maddie's ute. That, that was a mission and a half on its own, just to drive back in there and fix it. And then we drove all the way back out of the other side of the desert and continued on. <laughs> 200 litre long range.
So basically, the gold ute from TikTok has done the Simpson Desert twice unintentionally. But yeah, went to the Mud and Granny Hotel. The guy there that owns that, he had a, a lemon lime rusky every morning for breakfast, him and his wife. So we had a lemon, so we had a couple of ruskies with them for brekkie, a couple of camel burgers, and then we headed off down to um, Adelaide. Mungaranny Hotel. Yeah, stay the night, some hot showers and good fuel. It was actually my birthday that weekend and Bailey Winnen organised a meet at the KFC for my birthday and everyone had zinger boxes at the KFC. It was pretty funny and we all sung, they all sung happy birthday to me. Um, there's going to be a lot of zinger boxes that are required. I just want to give you a heads up that way you don't run out of chicken. Happy birthday to you! I've probably got a bit carried away and been rambling on about things that I didn't need to but at least it gives you a bit of an insight into how this thing came about and all the adventures I've been on. We come home, um, we painted Maddie's ute blue, we pulled it all apart, stripped it down, took it in the paint booth in town and painted it blue. Um, Maddie went home, he pulled it apart and he put a barrow motor in it and I went to the high country and I got defected by the cops in the middle of the bush, got it cleared, took me ages. and. Got the Speedworks bender and I have started to make some bar work. Now, in around that time before and after that, I actually started doing a little bit more work to Baz. So I built the motor, got a turbo, put it on there, done everything, painted everything, built the chassis. This was a lot of work, this chassis. I could go on for hours and hours and hours with stories of these two cars and things that I do and whatever else, and I'm sure you'd love to hear it, but I just wanted to do a brief skim across how the gold uke from TikTok evolved. I hope you've really enjoyed it. I want to know from you guys, can you please leave in the comments below, what videos do you want to see from me? Because this is my first video. There is hundreds of different options um, for what I can film to make a video of, to show you. I'm the guy that just works in a shed in Emu. I build U trays to fund my project cars and stuff. So I don't have unlimited money. I can't just go and build cars every day. What do you just want to see with you on videos of the cars out for driving? Do you want videos of me building the cars? I can do episodes like instructive episodes. Let's just say I've got to build some diffs for Baz, some solid pinion spaces, lockers, stuff like that. I'm gonna build them on the bench over there. Should I be filming that, make it a whole episode? I'm not a diff specialist, but I'm happy to show you guys how I build a diff. And then you can watch the following episodes to see if it blows up. Is that the kind of stuff? Does anyone have any suggestions of anything that you wanna see? Put it below in the comments because I'm really keen to hear back. If you like this video and you want to see more, obviously give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. Then it can come up in your feed and you'll be able to see this year get airborne or this year get airborne. Who, who knows? <laughs> Hopefully sometime soon I'll have this year on the road and yeah, you'll be able to see those videos on here if you subscribe. So make sure you do.